So finally, let's create some images. Let's start off with a standard generation. So I've entered my prompt here, my negative prompt, set all my settings in the model. Once again, you want to make sure that you click on send to gallery and you also want to make sure you're on the appropriate board. So I'm going to select fantasy characters and I'm going to go ahead and click invoke or you can hit control enter. Now as this generates, if you notice display progress here, you can turn that off if you wanted to like sift between your galleries and look at different images or you could toggle it on if you want to see the progress. You'll also notice at the top how many images you have that are left in the queue and now you can sift in between those generations. So here's the first image, here's a second image and you see that they're added to the board in my gallery. While you're in the viewer mode, if you right click over your image, you're going to get some typical options. Open a new tab will open this picture within your browser in a new tab. You can copy the image, download the image, open in viewer, you're already in there, or you can select to compare. So let's say I select to compare and, and I choose another image. Obviously they're not the same, but you can do a side by side comparison. Let's say you're using the same seed and you want to compare the two. That's a good option. Then you can do like side by sides here, hover, and then you can exit. You can load a workflow, which is using the node-based system. Remix the image. So if I select this, it's going to populate the same prompt, the same settings. Here you can reuse just the prompt, reuse the seed. Use all is similar to Remix. I don't know if there's any difference between the two, to be honest, but it'll set everything according to the settings that you use for this particular image. We used that use for prompt template earlier. Send to upscale if you want to upscale your image. You can create a new layer with this image. And if you had an empty canvas, you can send this to the canvas directly. So if I click on that, you see it's going to be sent to the canvas automatically. Change board means if I select this, if we click on the drop down, we can select a different board if we wanted to. Then you have your star image here and delete image. You also have the same options up here. And also these options are pretty much the same thing. There's multiple ways where you can do the same actions. Now this time I'm going to toggle on the canvas. So what I'm going to do is close this and then we can see the canvas. And then we're going to go ahead and generate. And you'll notice it's generating within what's called the bounding box. When you're in canvas mode, anything that you're going to generate will be within this box. You'll see at the top the size here, bounding box 704 by 1024. We'll talk about the scaled box in a bit. Okay, now that the generations are finished, you see we have one of two. I generated two images. Here you can sift between the two and you could choose the one that you want to keep. If I click on accept, it'll put this one on the canvas. This one showing results, that's for in painting and out painting, which we'll look at later. Or you can save both of them to the gallery. So let's say save this to the gallery and save this one to the gallery. I can do that. Or we could discard them or discard all. So if I go into my gallery, you see that I have both of the generations here. Next, let's take a look at image to image. So I'm going to use this image here and ignore these for now, but this is control net. This is using like IP adapter. For now, we're going to slide it into new raster layer. And if I click on layers here, you see that there's a raster layer and it creates an inpaint mask automatically. We'll look at that later when we look at inpainting. And here's where we would utilize denoising strength. If we put it down to 0.3, let's generate that. It's not going to change it too much. It's going to stay close to the original composition, even some of the details. But if we bring this up to, let's say 0.8, we'll generate another image. It's going to be more creative. It may add more details and steer a little bit further from the original. So let's toggle between the original. Here's the original and here it is at 0.3 denoising. You'll notice when I switch between the two, the details don't change all that much. Now this one with the denoising at 0.8, 
my toggle between the two. Much more drastic changes, especially in the arm. If you notice the arm here, it's more bent and holding something. But in the new generation, his arm is at the side. He's no longer holding anything. And various details have changed quite a bit here. So, so once again, original and denoising at 0.8. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this one. And let's start with outpainting, okay? Now when you're within Canvas, there are various ways to move around. If you have a scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out with your scroll wheel. If you hold on to space bar, this is where you can move around. And then you have your various Canvas tools. All of these have shortcut keys. B for brush, E for eraser, U for rectangle, V for move, H for the hand tool, C for the bounding box, and I for the color picker. Here you can zoom in and out manually. You can even type it in if you wanted to. This will fit your image to canvas and center it. And if your bounding box, let's say your bounding box was out of whack, you can click this to make it fit around your image. You can save your work on the canvas with this icon and you have your undo and redo trash buttons. And then you have various options here on the gear icon that are pretty straightforward. We don't really have to cover this all now, but I'll go over them when I do a dedicated canvas video. So the outpaint is really simple. We're going to hit C, make sure the bounding box is on. We're going to leave about half of the image within the bounding box and the other half empty. Let's make four variations and we'll leave everything else and we'll go ahead and generate. Now with outpainting, you got to be careful since I'm using the same prompt. I'm making sure that I have enough of the original prompt within the bounding box. If I were to move this right, like right at the edge, chances are it's going to create another wizard. I don't want that to happen because the image itself is still acting like an image prompt. So it's only going to fill in this area that has no information. So here are the four variations. Here's the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. They all look pretty good and seamless. That's kind of funky. I like the way that looks, uh, but I like the lightning striking here. So let's go ahead and accept it. And once again, just like we did with the image to image, it creates a raster layer for this addition to the image. So if I toggle this off, here's the image before, here's the image after the outpainting. Now, if I zoom into the image here, you see that the face doesn't look great. This is a great opportunity to use inpainting. So we already have an inpaint mask by default, but if we wanted to add one, we can just go up here, add inpaint mask. You may want to have different masks for different sections, and it's great that you can save each mask to an individual layer. So I'm going to go ahead and let's close this off and we're going to select B for brush. So when I create this mask here, I'm going to do this really quickly. You always want a mask within the bounding box. And the other quick thing I wanted to show you is that if you're on a raster layer, this is how you can actually draw onto the image and create things, which we'll look at another time. But you always want to make sure you are selecting the inpaint mask, okay? You can change the color here if you want to. So think of it this way, if you want to touch up, use an inpaint mask. If you want to draw and add details, you want to do it on the raster layer. Now in terms of settings, I'm going to use a denoising strength of 0.55. Let's go ahead and generate those four images. Now when this starts generating, you'll see that the noise is only going to be applied to the mask. It's going to leave all the details around it alone. The other thing I wanted to point out is that if you notice here, the bounding box is 256 by 256, but the scaled bounding box is 1024 by 1024. What that means is that even though the boundary box is at 256 by 256, it's actually generating it in its native resolution at 1024. So in a sense, you're pulling more details out of the image instead of it generating at 256. Okay, let's take a look at the variation. So once again, here's the original. See the details in the face. They're not very detailed at all. Here's the first one. Second one, third one, and fourth one. I kind of like the fourth and first. 
yeah, let's go with that one. Let's toggle off the in-paint mask. And once again, you see that it's created its own raster layer. If I disable this, it's got its own dedicated raster layer. Now, once you're satisfied with your image and you're done, you can do a couple of things here. You can right click, save canvas to gallery or you can right click and save bounding box to gallery. So let's say I grab the bounding box and I just wanted to save this portion. We can right click, save bounding box to gallery and it's just gonna save this portion of the image. We go into the gallery here. Let's open up the viewer. There's that portion. And then here is the full image that we saved. Now, a few things to keep in mind. Let's say you turn off Invoke AI, you shut it down and you come back. Everything that you've worked on will still be in place here. However, if you reset the canvas by clicking on the trash bin here, you're gonna lose all your work. So hopefully in a future update, you'll be able to save sessions where you can go between different sessions. That would be really helpful. But just keep in mind not to clear your canvas until you are completely done. So that's a run through on the basics of Invoke AI 5.0. We'll definitely go more in depth with inpainting, outpainting, control layers, all that stuff in future videos. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or any topic suggestions. As always, my friends, until that next video, I'll see you when I see you.